Oh, you caught me. Ha. Um, so do you see yourself sitting like this all day long? Um, I know I catch myself doing it too. And this is today's topic about how we are hunched over all day long at our desks and at our phones and how um, that is truly affecting what's happening with our upper body. Hi, welcome. It's day three. I'm Zena. I think you all know me by now. And um, we are uh, working on the Desk Warrior Boot Camp day three topic today, which is hunchback posture. Um, I wanted to remind everyone to continue to share the love. I'm still getting um, inquiries and people joining our group kind of late in the game. But this is a topic I think that interests a lot of people because everybody is sitting at their desk. Um, be sure to say hi and comment if you're watching live. Um, so I can say hi to you. On we'll have time today to address any questions, um, although uh, what I have planned may take us the full 20 minutes. So um, first I want to talk about what is a hunchback posture. The technical term for it is kyphosis. And um, there's a lot going on in our body when we're in this um, kyphos kyphotic posture. So Kyphosis is sort of one we've got rounded shoulders, our heads jutting forward. I wore my hair up for a reason today uh, because I wanted you to be able to see where my ear and my alignment and my head and everything is. Um, but usually someone in kyphosis, we've got this going on, we've got the head jutting forward. The other thing I see often is if we have the hands by the sides, we see people in that sort of internal rotation of the shoulder joint. And um, when I'm doing posture pictures, if I see someone's hands slightly in front and internally rotated, then I know for sure there's a kyphosis going on or a kyphotic posture going on. So it's one of the first things I look at are people's hands and where they're placed and sort of what's going on with the rotation. So um, I am going to peek at my little book, Sculpt and Shape the Pilates Way. Uh, uh, this is on page 36, and we're going to talk about the tight muscles and the weak muscles that are contributing to this posture. So uh, what's tight are our pectoral muscles. So these are the muscles here in the chest. And um, when they're tight, it pulls that shoulder and everything kind of forward. Um, the other muscle that's tight for this is our latissimus dorsi muscles here on the sides of our body. Um, the thing about this muscle is that it actually connects into the humerus um, bone, so the, the arm bone, and so when it's tightened, again, it kind of pulls that shoulder forward and slightly internally rotates that shoulder. So that is a forgotten muscle. Most people know that when they have kyphosis, they need to stretch the chest, but we will definitely be working on stretching the lat today, um, and it usually just feels really, really good, especially for someone that's got kyphosis. Um, I mentioned this muscle yesterday when we were talking about anterior pelvic tilts. So um, again, that tight muscle is a, um, it is a critical one and it tends to be forgotten. Um, we also have tight upper trapezius muscles, which are the muscles kind of up here in your upper, um, it's actually shaped like a trapezius, um, in your upper back area here. And again, when those are tight, it kind of pulls everything forward. Okay, let's talk about weak muscles. Uh, this posture it usually has weak erector spinae muscles, which are the muscles that are around the spine. Um, and when those are weak and lengthened, they, they don't pull your body into alignment that the way that they should be. So the stronger those muscles are, the more you'll be able to hold yourself in alignment. Um, we tend to have weak mid and low back muscles. So right here, kind of in this bra line, I wore this um, shirt for a reason so you can kind of see my muscles and my scapula. When we get to that part of the workout, you'll be seeing me squeeze those muscles. And those are the muscles we're talking about that are generally weak with people with kyphosis. And by the way, I'm thinking it's like 90, 95% of the population that has this uh, postural deviation because of our texting. I think computer lifestyles got us there, but then the phone and the texting just brought us over to the other side. Um, weak, deep cervical spine muscles. So your neck is your cervical spine, it's where your cervical spine is. And when those muscles are weak, that means that we don't have the ability to pull the head back and hold it in proper alignment. We technically want the ear to be over the shoulder on this, and that's um, a really important muscle group that we need to have strong to pull the head back. Um, and then we also tend to have weak posterior 
for this today. We're actually going to be stretching and exercising today because this is an easy, super easy thing to do at your desk throughout the day. Um, legs a little harder to get a leg workout in. We tend to get sweaty, so we were just focused on stretches yesterday. But today we are going to actually stretch and do some exercises to help strengthen those muscles. So the posterior deltoids are the muscles that are on the back side of the shoulders. And when those are weak, again, they don't have the ability to pull the shoulders back into the position that they need to be in. So there you go. There's your little um, anatomy lesson on what we're going to be working on today and why we're going to be working on it. So let's get started. As a reminder, I would like it if you did the stretches with me. That way you can feel it on your body. And we're going to start with two different kinds of chest stretches. One's going to be a seated one that you can do at your desk, and one's going to be a standing one. So for the seated one, we're going to um, actually take our hands on the back of our chair and just literally lean forward. So let me turn this to the side, and you'll see me grab the back of the chair here, and I'm going to just lean, push my chest out. I think the other day, or maybe it was Monday, I was telling you not to flare your rib cage. In this case, because it's a stretch, you can definitely allow your ribs to flare and open up and just push out as much as you can so you feel that stretch right here in the front of your chest. Keep stretching while I talk. You want to, again, hold these stretches for about a minute at a time. It takes some time before the muscle, what happens is there's an argument happening between, between the muscle, it, within the muscle. One part of the muscle wants to stretch, one part of the muscle doesn't want to stretch. It takes about 30 seconds before the part that wants to stretch wins the argument, and then the muscle actually starts to elongate, which is why we want to hold these stretches for at least a minute. It gives us that time for the muscle to adapt and really lengthen. So that was our first stretch. It's, again, a chest stretch sitting down, and you can do this. Again, no excuses. Um, you, can't, you have to take your hands off the keyboard for this stretch, I'll be honest. Okay, so you'll have to take a little break. But if you find yourself on the phone or you find yourself reading something that doesn't require you to have your hands on the keyboard, that's a great opportunity to do this stretch. Okay, next we're going to do it standing. We can also do this seated, but it feels good standing, taking our hands behind us, reaching the hands down towards us, and then pulling the hands backward to get a nice stretch in the chest as well. I find myself, and again, you can do the seated, it's a little harder because you're going to bang into your chair here. Keep stretching while I talk. I find myself doing this stretch throughout my day. I'll be on my phone for a bit, put it down, take my hands behind me. Oh, gosh, I'm going to stretch that and find that. And the one thing that I love about this stretch, too, is when you're doing it, you'll see my shoulder blades are pinching together behind me. So I'm getting a little bit of activation in those muscles at the same time. Again, you want to hold each of these for a minute. You can do them throughout the day. Um, easy to get in. Uh, really good for your body and should be pretty simple. Okay, next we're going to work on neck stretches. Okay, so neck stretches feel good. I know we talked about neck muscles um, being weak, and we will definitely be doing exercise for it, but we also want to stretch the neck muscles. I wrote a, um, an email a couple days ago about how in the nowadays in our cars, if you have a newer car and you put your car into reverse, you now get that fancy camera. You no longer have to turn your head. So we tend to lose, we have, most of us have tend to lose mobility in that part of our spine. And it's a super important part of our spine. Our cervical spine has a lot of rotation in it. Our thoracic rotation in it. And our lumbar spine has very little rotation in it. And the, this is designed or it's a result of the size of the vertebrae, right? The vertebrae are smaller at the top than they are at the bottom. And so at the top, we should really be able to rotate our head from side to side. If we lost that ability, it's going to affect the rest of the body, the rest of the chain. So these stretches are going to help just make sure we keep that mobility happening in our spine. So the first one is we're going to take our hand and we're going to bring it to our chin and we're going to push our chin backwards. And we're going to do that so that we can kind of get that ear lined up with the shoulder the way that it should be. And then we're going to drop the ear to the shoulder, place the hand on the head, and then gently pull down. And then we're going to take this hand behind us just so we can get that oppositional stretch. Again, you're going to hold a minute on each side. Remember, you want to try to keep that head in alignment so you can really stretch the proper muscle, the muscle that's supposed to be stretching. 
Um, let's try the other side. So you take that hand behind you, you're gonna bring the chin back, and then we're going to bring the uh, head over. And breathe. So the one thing I didn't talk about is that when you are doing stretches, it is important to breathe. You can do either a rib cage breath or a diaphragmatic breath here when you're stretching. When you're exercising, you want to do the rib cage breathing. That way you keep your TBA and your pelvic floor engaged when you're breathing. But when you're stretching, you can kind of do whatever breathing feels comfortable for you. Um, you just don't want to be holding your breath ever because <laughs> that's not good. I end up having to do CPR on clients when they hold their breath. Not a good thing. Um, so again, make sure you're breathing. And I think that was about a minute on each side. Our second, actually three next stretches that we're doing. Our second next stretch is um, just a different muscle in the neck. So taking the hand behind the head again, pulling the chin back again, dropping the ear to the shoulder. And then this time you're gonna look down into your pocket. Okay, so if my head, uh, if my head tilted to the right, I'm gonna look down into my right pocket. And then that hand's gonna go on the top of the head again, gentle, really gentle. You're not cranking. Go ahead and keep stretching as I talk. With stretching, you want to feel a mild sensation. You don't want to feel any kind of sharp pain or anything like that. If you are, you need to back out and do something different, okay? Let's do the other side, taking that hand behind us, drop the chin back, drop the ear to the shoulder, and then look down into that pocket, take the hand behind the head, and feel that gentle stretch. Just like with the legs, you're going to have one side that's tighter than the other. Mine is usually my right. Today, it happens to be my left. Not sure why, it just is. So, um, you know, doesn't matter. Find that tight side, hold into it. You can hold the tight side a little bit longer if it feels good for you. The important thing is to try to hold those stretches for a minute. All right, um, the third neck little stretch, I'm gonna combine, uh, it's a little rotation. It's actually more stretch for the thoracic spine, but you're gonna get a little cervical mobility at the same time. We're gonna do some twisting. So as I was talking about, we, um, we should be able to rotate from that mid-back and that upper cervical spine as much as we can. And we tend to lose that when we're sitting at a desk. So to do this rotation stretch, I'm gonna move backwards. I'm gonna take one hand on the chair, one hand on the back of the chair. I'm gonna twist my body and turn my head as much as I can at the same time. I want to talk to you, but I wanna keep try to keep both hips planted, both butt cheeks planted on the chair as I do this. So again, you can use the chair to kind of pull yourself into this position, but make sure you're, if you're twisting to the left, that your right butt cheek stays down. Let's go ahead and take the other side. So now I'm twisting to the right, probably looks the opposite for you, but you wanna keep the opposite butt cheek down as you do that, and you wanna look over the shoulder as much as you can. Again, this is simple to do at your desk throughout your day. The more rotation you get with your head, the better it is. Try and keep both hip bones and both butt cheeks, sorry, both butt cheeks planted in the chair and both hip bones facing forward will help maximize the amount of rotation stretch you're gonna get in your mid back and your upper back. All right, um, let's move on to one more stretch. I talked to you about the lats, okay? Those muscles down the side of your body. We're gonna do a lat stretch. Let me lower this down just a little bit. With the lat stretch, one arm is gonna, gonna cup up and over. And instead of like dropping into it, I'm going to think about lengthening into it. So I'm going to reach my fingertip to the part of the room where the ceiling meets the wall. And then I'm going to kind of push into this other hand so I can have a little bit of pressure as I reach with my top hand and kind of push with my bottom hand. Again, keeping both butt cheeks planted into the chair. So the arm goes up and over. You really reach. You'll feel that side stretch. One thing to look out for, you don't want to let the body lean forward. You want to try to keep that alignment. So there's a straight line from the finger down to my hip. It's not coming forward towards me. It's really reaching up and over. If you, a switch side, if you find your arm reaching forward, that means you're super tight here, okay? So maybe don't lean as much over. Think more about up. Then as you develop more flexibility, you can think about reaching over and getting more flexibility on this. Um, some people are going to feel this here in the lat. Some people might feel a little bit lower, okay? That's all fine and good. It's a pretty big muscle. There's a lot to stretch here. Again, you want to do a minute on each side. Okay, that's it for the stretches. So I gave you two chest stretches, two isolated neck stretch, a rotation stretch, and a lat stretch. So six different stretches that you can do at your desk.
They do require you to take your hands off the keyboard, but I'm sure there's a moment in your day that you're maybe reading or doing something, you don't necessarily have to be typing, that you can maximize your time and do those stretches. Moving on to exercises. I have three that I need to slam through, so I'm gonna start talking fast, as if I don't talk fast already. One is called shoulder openers. Okay, you probably see this done before with a TheraBand in the hand. I'm gonna do this one without a TheraBand. All I want you to think about is squeezing your shoulder blades together behind you. So th this is one of those situations where we wanna try not to flare the ribs. If we do flare the ribs, then I'm actually just doing more of an abdominal exercise and less of a scapular exercise. I'm gonna turn around and do five repetitions facing in the opposite direction. I'm not gonna talk, but I want you to see how my scapula pulls together as I do this. So I'm gonna face this way, and I'm gonna squeeze. Beautiful. So as you can see, it's really about squeezing the scapula together behind you. That's where you're going to get um, that contraction, working on those mid-back muscles, getting them stronger. The next exercise I call alphabet soup, and it's because you make three different letters with, of your body with, with your, as you're doing it. So first, you're going to take your arms up to a T position. So here I am like a T. Then I'm going to bring my arms to two L shapes. Then I'm going to pull my elbows in and, again, squeeze those shoulder blades together behind me to get that little scapular squeeze and then drop my arms back down again, and that was a W. So here we are to T, L, W, down. T, L, W, down. Let me do it turning away. And there's a reason why we do the T. T, L, W down. T L W down. And the reason why we do the T first is because if we just go straight to W, people tend to bring their shoulders up by their ears and then bring it down. We don't want that. We want to keep the shoulders down the whole time. So T kind of helps us keep the shoulders down. Then we go to our L's. Then we come to our W. And then we come down. So that is alphabet soup. Finally, we want to work on some neck contraction. So we talked about the deep cervical spine extensors being weak. So we're going to think about pulling those muscles back or engaging those muscles and pulling the head back into position. So it's super simple. This is one of those ones that, again, you can do throughout your day. When you pull your chin back, you're also going to get a little squeeze in your scapula. So if you do it all at the same time, you're also gonna see me pull my shoulders down a little bit. So my scapular muscles, which the scapular are those wings on your back, they're pulling down, they're squeezing together, and your head's moving back all at the same time. So let me turn around and do it facing away so you can see what's happening in my back. So I'm just pulling my head back, shoulders down. Head back, shoulders down, scapula engaged. Now, if I was doing this with a client in the studio, we'd probably be lying on our back or we'd probably be up against a wall. Both are hard to accomplish in your desk space, but I am going to improvise a little bit and show it to you here in my office. I'm going to use this um, little stand here behind me and see this little pole. Let's get it like up. up here. I'm going to use that. I'm going to walk my feet forward. Get this out of the way so you can see me. Walk my feet forward a little bit, heads up against. Here, and I'm going to just push my head against the bookshelf and relax. Push my head against the bookshelf and relax. Having something to push against is really valuable. It will give you the tactile cue that will help you maximize the exercise. So lying down is, also, uh, is great. However, standing up is even better because you're not, gravity is not assisting you. You're actually fighting against gravity. Okay, quickly. Um, I got a question about how to sit at your desk. Um, I want to emphasize that sitting at your desk in proper posture is super important, but it's also important to be moving throughout your day. And we're going to talk about that more tomorrow and how you can get more movement in besides the exercises that I'm teaching. But when you're sitting, your upper body posture, when you're sitting at your desk, you should be in that neutral pelvis that we talked about the last two days. You should have your um, 
your like nice little curve in your lumbar spine. You want your elbows at a 90 degree angle, okay, 90 degree angle. You want your hands to, you want to be able to reach forward a little bit with the, with the hands, but you do not want to be here because that's going to put a lot of strain and pressure on the upper arms. So slightly in front of the rib cage with the elbows, hands at 90 degree angle, and then you want your ear lined up over your shoulder. This is your ideal position. I'm willing to bat like nobody sits in that position for a long period of time. Um, but that's really ideally where you should be, okay? But tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about how st sitting and standing desks, chair options that might help you get more movement in so that you can maybe hold this for a while and then um, get some movement in with your pelvis and other things that might help you hold this position so you're not getting fatigued holding still for hours on an end. And then the final thing, question that I get often is why do I get so tired? When I'm sitting in this position, super easy answer, because it's hard. Because you have to actually use your muscles. You actually have to engage your muscles. And when we, when we tend to be sitting for long periods of time, we get lazy and we sink down and it just becomes sort of automatic. So again, tomorrow I'll give you some tips on how we can try to undo all that automatic slouching that happened for you for the last couple of years. All right, I hope that was helpful. You got six stretches and three exercises. All things you can do at your desk throughout the day. Tomorrow, like I said, we're going to work on piecing it all together. So while we're doing all the stretches we learn, I'll be talking a little bit about devices and chairs to help you be at your posture and your best posture throughout your day and help you get more movement throughout your day at the same time. All right, this has been fun. I will see you tomorrow. Be sure to email me or post in the Facebook group if you have any questions. See you later.